Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Curious Online. We're really glad you're joining us tonight. My name is Jill Sullivan, and I'm the director of our student ministry here at Faith Bridge. And my name is Tyler Riley, and I'm the high school pastor. If you've been tuning in with us on Wednesday nights, this is going to be a familiar format, but just in case this is your first time tuning in, this is called Curious Online. And even though this format has become familiar, what we normally do on Wednesday nights looks just a little bit different. That's right. So normally, 6th grade through 12th grade groups are divided by grade and gender on Wednesday nights, and they meet in their small groups. But here's the really unique thing about our student ministry small groups that we wanted to tell you. Those groups, when they're formed, the leaders and the students in 6th grade, they stay together their entire student career. So that means for 7 years, these groups stay the same. And what's really special about that is the trust that is formed throughout those seven years through sharing, through vulnerability, through experiencing all of the same things together really establishes deep trust within those groups. And honestly, it results in life-changing community. And here's the thing. When those seniors graduate after experiencing Curious, a lot of times they stay connected because of how influential that community had been. So here's the thing. We want you to be able to experience those same things as a family, that this season and these nights would produce trust for you guys as a family and honestly even be life-changing community for you guys to alter your family forever. That's right. So tonight we're just seeking to provide you guys with a resource to take hold of the unique opportunity before you to engage as a family. We're going to be having fun together. We're going to be doing a game every Wednesday night. You can have a little bit of friendly competition as a family. It's going to be a ton of fun. And then we're also going to look in truth in God's word with a devotional that's gonna be led by a different member of our FSM team each week. And so ultimately, we're just hoping that you guys are able to connect as a family, you guys are able to dive in deep, and really, we're praying that this becomes a habit that lasts far beyond this season. That's right, so all of that is yet to come tonight. But first, it's, it's game, game time. time. That's right, everybody, it's Curious Game Night. I'm Amanda. And I'm Reed. Missy here. And we're gonna be playing the human boppet tonight. So what I'm gonna need you to do is go ahead and start getting up off your couch, maybe doing a little bit of stretching, because it's gonna require a little bit of movement. So yes, mom and dad included, off the couch. Make sure no dogs are around so you don't hit your brother or sister, although you might want to right now. But let's be loving. Missy, can you tell us what we're gonna be doing with this? Absolutely, you may remember this game. It used to be a handheld game, but we're gonna make it full on. So that's why everybody needs to stand up. There's certain movements in this game and Reed's gonna explain those movements. They're not in any order, but he's gonna explain Oh them. yeah, so we got four movements for you guys tonight. And our first movement for y'all is the movement of clap it, all right? We're gonna go on the count of three. One, two, three, clap it, all right? And our second movement we have for y'all is the movement of spin it. Ready, one, two, three, spin it. And I almost fell over there for you guys, so be careful in your living room because this movement can get you. Our third movement we got for y'all is jab it. Ready, one, two, three, jab it. All right, and our fourth movement we have for y'all is jump it. Ready, one, two, three, oh, woo. And <laughs> so you guys be ready because we're about to do a quick round, but it's not gonna be quick up here. We're gonna slow it down for y'all so that y'all can get ready for later because it gets really fast. So we're gonna do our first round with our first movement of clap it. Ready, one, two, three, clap it, spin it, jab it, and jump it. And so we saw a few of us were a little bit slower than others. That means you at home, if you were slower than some of the people around you, or if you missed the beat, you have to sit down, but you still get to encourage those that are still in the game. Missy, good job. Way to go. You kept up. You were doing good. So how many more rounds do I have to, to win this game? That's right. You, we forgot about that. You have three rounds to play this game. So as the rounds continue to go, they're going to get quicker. So you guys better be ready because it gets really fast and a lot of movement's coming. All right. Up. Speaking of ready, are you guys ready? Let's count them down because it's going to come on screen. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Three, two, two one, one, go. Jump it. Clap it. Spin it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it, spin it, jump it, dab it, come on, dab it, come on, jump it, spin it, spin it, spin it, clap it, dab it, come on, jump it, spin it, jump it, clap it, clap it, dab it, come on, jump it, spin it, jump it, clap it, clap it, 
Stab it. Come on. Spin it. Jump it. Spin it. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Dab it. Come on. Jump it. Clap it. Spin it. Spin it. Jump it. Clap it. Jump it. Dab it. Come on. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Clap it. Spin it. Jump it. Clap it. Spin it. Dab it. Come on. Jump it. Clap it. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Jump it. Clap it. Spin it. Dab it. Come on. Jump it. Clap it. Clap it. Spin it. Dab it. Come on. Spin it. Oh my gosh. That was just the first round. <laughs> I'm tired. I need, very heavy. I need some water. <laughs> all right. All right. Y'all ready for round two? I think Here we so. go. Here we go. Jump it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Spin it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Jump it. Spin it. Spin it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Jump it. Spin it. Jump it. Clap it. Jump it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Spin it. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Clap it. Jump it. Dab it. Come on. Spin it. Clap it. Jump it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Spin it. Jump it. Jump it. Jump it. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Spin it. Clap it. Come on. Dab it. Jump it. Clap it. Spin it. Jump it. Spin it. Clap it. Spin it. Spin it. Jump it. Clap it. Dab it. Come on. Dab it. Come on. Clap it. Jump it. Spin it. I think it's so fun. As my sixth graders know, because we play it a lot. By the way, I'm Maddie and I am the sixth grade coordinator. I am over all of the launch programming here at Faithbridge and I just love it so much. Well, I'm excited to dive into God's word with y'all tonight. And so if you want to open up your Bible and join me at Acts chapter one. So this past Sunday was Easter and I don't know about you, but I really appreciated doing Easter a little differently this year. Don't get me wrong, I missed my family in Chicago so much. But honestly, there's something so peaceful and meaningful about celebrating Easter just in your living room. No family drama, no fancy clothes, no tight timelines. Just time to really reflect on the Easter message. And just kind of like the Grinch who stole Christmas, once you take away all the fluff, all the wrapping, the gifts, the decorations, the meaning is still there. And there's something so special and powerful about that. As we've been coming off of Easter, I've been thinking a lot about what happens next. Not only what happens next for the disciples, but also what happens next for you and me. 
it's been about a month of time that we have been in quarantine. I don't know about you, but I've watched a lot of good movies, made some TikToks, laughed at funny memes, finally figured out how to use Zoom and worshiped in my own living room. But honestly, I'm ready to get back to my old life. I miss seeing my friends, I miss seeing you guys on Wednesdays and Sundays, and I miss sitting down at Chick-fil-A. And so, as I've been thinking a lot about what happens next for you and me, I decided to look at what happens next for the disciples. And I want you guys to remember that the disciples were waiting for their freedom too. The Roman Empire had taken over their people. The Jewish people had been waiting and waiting for a Messiah to come and deliver them from the oppression of the Romans. And Jesus was that long-awaited Messiah. He came and he shook everything up. He performed miracles and taught them about the kingdom of God. If there are any doubts about him at all, they were crushed when he resurrected. Y'all, the Romans killed him, but he came back. And so the disciples were ready. They were ready for Jesus to come and to finally end the oppression of the Romans and restore their old kingdom. They were wanting Israel to have their glory days back. So we're going to read what happens next when the disciples start asking questions about this. So if you guys would read with me, Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, for the, and to the ends of the earth. Friends, I think that Jesus was speaking as much to his disciples as he is to us today. Despite our uncertainty, we are called to be a witness. The disciples thought that Jesus was going to restore their old kingdom. That was what they've been waiting for, right? They thought that the Messiah was going to overthrow the oppression of the Romans and turn them back to normal, to the kingdom of Israel. Jesus did not have that in mind. Jesus came to defeat the oppression of sin, to defeat the oppression of death. Jesus was not ushering in the kingdom of Israel, but the kingdom of God. Jesus has way bigger things than we can ever imagine in store. Jesus wasn't going to return them to their old way of life. He was showing them a new and better way to live. How often do we not see God working in our own life? We want Jesus to return us to our sports teams, our dance studios, and our prom. What if God is showing us that there's a better way to live in this season? a time of peace, family, and contentment. We have traded in our busy schedules, our on-the-go meals, and feeling like we're running on empty, to having free time to explore new things, being able to sit down at the table for dinner with our family, and time to refill our souls. The disciples hadn't grasped that yet. There was a lot of uncertainty. This uncertainty led them to confusion, and then they started asking Jesus the wrong questions. I'm wondering, has our uncertainty led us to ask the wrong questions too? God, when is this going to end? When are you going to restore my life back to the way that it was before? God, this is not at all what I imagined my senior year to look like. What happened to everything that I had been looking forward to for so long? But Jesus instead said this, He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus let his disciples know not only were they asking the wrong questions, they were focused on the wrong thing. The disciples forgot that they had a mission, a mission that Jesus had given them In Matthew 28, when he said, All authority has been given to me in heaven. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Friends, we're on a mission. God has called us to be a witness of the resurrection despite our circumstances, despite the confusion and the questions Sometimes we won't know everything, and 
Honestly, that's okay. We do know the most important thing. We know him. God has revealed the gospel to us. He's empowered us with the Holy Spirit, and now he's sent us on a mission. I challenge you, as we head off to discuss this with our families, I challenge you to really begin to think, how can I be a witness this week? How can you, T. Rennie, how can you, TJ, you, Aubrey, be a witness to the people in your life this week? Now, friends, I'm really excited for you guys to dive into discussion. So we are going to head back to Jill and Tyler before we do that. Well, thanks, Maddie. And that was a great word and a great reminder that even in this season, no matter the circumstance that we're in, we are still called to be a witness. We are still called to reach out to people. And we're going to have to kind of explore different ways to be able to do that in a creative sense. But that is still our calling as believers to be a witness. So Maddie, thanks so much for that reminder and hope you guys were encouraged by that word as well. Yeah. So families, you guys will get to talk about that very thing tonight, but we want to give you one tip um, as we go into our discussion times. So one of our goals as a student ministry is that we would be seeking opportunities and interactions that are transformational, not just transactional. So you may think, what does that mean? Well, we hope that all of these experiences or conversations are not just sliding information across the table or back and forth between your family members or just an exchange of conversation or almost like a um, box check on your to-do list. But instead, we hope that there are transformational moments where Jesus works his way into your conversations and allows you to have conversations that maybe you have never had before within your family. So that's what we're hoping for you guys tonight. And even as you shift gears into your discussion time, keep the word transformation in mind instead of transaction. That's right. So make tonight a transformational moment, not just a transactional one. Don't rush. Take your time. You've got all the time in the world. Dig in deep. Be willing to share. Be willing to be vulnerable. And ultimately, we're praying for your time together that the Lord would bless it and he would bring you guys closer together as y'all spend time in discussion. That's right. So now, in just a second, you guys will see an icebreaker question that will come up on the screen. Start with that one. It's just designed to be fun for you to get to know each other in a new way. Then there will be three discussion questions that you can make your way through as a family. It'll be great. So families, we will turn it back over to you and we'll see you tomorrow night for worship. See you then.